welcome to this worship. My name is Carmen Little and I am a lay leader with the Chetwin Shared Ministry. It is my pleasure to worship with you today. Our call to worship. Hope where we had ceased to hope. Hope amid what threatens hope. Hope with those who feed our hope. Hope beyond what we had hoped. Hope that takes us past our fear. Hope that calls us into life. Hope that holds us beyond death. Hope that blesses those to come. We begin with our opening prayer. All thanks to you, most holy friend, giver of light and love and holy joy. Before the beginning, when space and time did not exist, you nursed a brilliant hope for the children who were yet to be. In the young world, when you first raised up humankind, you planted in them a hope that would survive their wandering and falling. Through the turmoil of history, with the rise and fall of powerful nations, you called the Hebrew tribes to be your people of hope. With prophets and ethical lawmakers, with their poets and devout scholars, you prepared the world for a hope event to outstretch all others. At exactly the appropriate time, you sent John the baptizer to get your people ready for the incarnate hope that would begin at Bethlehem and ripple around the world. And when we, your dear children, find our place in this world, we discovered all around us, like yeast in dough, the energy of this hope, veined through all things. For the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Amen. What is so important about Christian hope? If our future is not secured and satisfied by God, then we are going to be excessively anxious. This results either in paralyzing fear or in self-managed, greedy control. We end up thinking about ourselves, our future, our problems, and our potential, and that keeps us from loving. In other words, hope is the birthplace of Christian self-sacrificing love. That's because we let God take care of us and aren't preoccupied with having to work to take care of ourselves. We say, Lord, I just want to be there for other people tomorrow because you're going to be there for me. If we don't have the hope that Christ is for us, then we will be engaged in self-preservation and self-enhancement. But if we let ourselves be taken care of by God for the future, whether five minutes or five centuries from now, then we can be free to love others. Then God's glory will shine more clearly because that's how he becomes visible. When God satisfies us so deeply that we're free to love other people, then he becomes more manifest, and that's what we want above all. What's the difference between a Christian definition of hope and the way it is usually used? The word hope in ordinary English vocabulary is generally distinguished from certainty. For example, I don't know what's going to happen, but I hope it happens. When you read the word hope in the Bible, set your hope fully on the grace that will be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ, hope is not wishful thinking. It's not, I don't know if it's going to happen, but I hope it happens. That's absolutely not what is meant by Christian hope. Christian hope is when God has promised that something is going to happen and you put your trust in that promise. Christian hope is confidence that something will come to pass because God has promised it will come to pass. Hope is a part of faith. Faith and hope, in my mind, are overlapping realities. Hope is faith in the future tense. So most of faith is hope. The Bible says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God in Romans 10. This implies that hope, like faith, is also strengthened by the Word of God. Hope comes from reading His precious and very great promises and looking to Christ who died on the cross for them. As written in Romans 8, He who did not withhold His own Son, but gave Him up for all of us, will He not with Him also give us everything else? That is hope producing, for it is grounded in the statement that God didn't spare his own son. So the essence of what we look to in the Bible to build our hope 
is what has Christ done for me in my sinful condition that enables me to know that I will not come into judgment and condemnation and that all things are working together for my good. And the answer is that Christ died for me, rose again for me, and therefore all of the promises of God are in Christ. So let's look away from the circumstances that confront us, look to Christ, look to the promises and hold fast to them. Hope comes from the promises of God rooted in the work of Christ. Even during this pandemic, we have a duty to anticipate God's goodness. Think of some of the things you or your family members may have lost or had to give up due to the pandemic. High school graduation, a once in a lifetime trip to an exotic location, visiting aging relatives, planning a wedding. Have disappointments caused you to stop getting excited, stop anticipating the future because of the disappointment of cancellation? This is the pandemic's collateral damage, the ability to dream, plan, and hope for the future. As Christians, we believe hope is an important part of our shared faith as well as our personal walk. But scripture suggests something more radical. Hope is not the privilege of the naturally optimistic. It is the responsibility of all who believe. Hope is the means by which we align not simply our plans, but also ourselves with God. It is how we move toward the future He is preparing for us in order to join Him there. In today's culture, the word hope is often used to represent wishful thinking. But the Old Testament verb translated hope to trust and wait expectantly. In Jeremiah 14, we read, Therefore our hope is in you, for you are the one who does all this. The prophet is not fearful. He isn't wondering if God will come through. Instead, Jeremiah confidently expects God to fulfill his promises to Israel. The New Testament gives more meaning to hope because now hope is invested in and focused on someone, the person of Jesus. Consider the words of 1 Timothy chapter 4. That is why we labor and strive, because we have put our hope in the living God, who is the Savior of all people. Unlike a child blowing out the candles on their birthday cake and making a wish, Biblical hope is not vain or fanciful thinking. Instead, hope rests in the few, pardon me, hope rests in the sure and confident expectation that God, who sent Christ to pay the penalty for our sins, will meet all of our needs, both in the present and for all eternity. Hope begins with our faith in Jesus and the trust that we have been rescued for eternal life. This hope transforms our entire approach to life. Hope builds anticipation. In Romans chapter 8, it says we can look forward to our salvation with anticipation. For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. Hope gives joy and peace. While writing to the believers in Rome, Paul wrote, May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace. Hope fills our hearts with praise. The, praise of sal pardon me, the promise of salvation is reason to celebrate, as the writer of Psalm 71 proclaims, As for me, I will always have hope. I will praise you more and more. Hope builds character and teaches us the disciplines of faith. There are many trials and tribulations that we face in life, financial loss, relationship loss, job loss, and so many more. Putting our hope in Jesus will help our faith to grow stronger during these painful times. We need to learn to rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. Hope encourages us to change our perspective. Someone who believes this world is as good as it gets will live differently from the person who believes they have a forever future 
full of abundance and joy. Hope has a way of helping us through whatever we are facing. We need to live our lives peering through the lens of eternity instead of seeking after earthly fame, wealth, enlightenment, or any other source of personal pleasure that must be enjoyed at the moment. We need to recognize that even the most beautiful of our experiences pale in comparison to what the Lord has in store for us. As 2 Corinthians chapter 2 reads, No mind has imagined the things that God has prepared for those who love Him. Hope encourages us to live with boldness. Followers of Jesus will one day be feasting at the wedding supper of the Lamb and know of one not too missed destination heaven. Again, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 tells us, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. The hope that the, those we know, love, and care about will be with us, and that spurs us on to tell others about his love and what it means that Jesus is our Savior. Hope encourages us to take a different approach to suffering. When struggle and trial raise their ugly heads, the reminder that heaven awaits comforts weary souls. The Bible promises our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. The Apostle Paul, who may have understood suffering more than any other apostle, wrote these words under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. God will redeem the believer's pain just as he did Christ's. Hope encourages us to live with intention. Scripture assures us that we were made in the image of God. Not only that, but we were created for good works. God made each of us with individual gifts and talents to do good works. No matter our past, He can use us to accomplish His purposes. Do you feel as though you need more hope? Spend time focusing on God's promises. Read the Bible and journal hope-filled scriptures that encourage your heart. Listen to your favorite praise or worship music and soak in His presence. Get involved, engaging in relationship, helping others, and being part of a community increases our sense of well-being. God made us to make a difference. Even something as simple as starting a new hobby can give us hope. Did you know that learning increases feel-good hormone production in the body? Have you always wanted to play the guitar, fly an airplane, play tennis like a pro? Today might be the perfect time to gather your resources, set up lessons, or plan that first session. Be encouraged. Hope was born in Bethlehem in a lowly stable, died on a cross, and rose again, that we might have life abundant. While we wait for him to call us home, we press on in eager anticipation as we serve one another and share about the hope of an amazing destination. Now, let us, God's people, pray. O God, giver of life, unbind us from the earthly desires that dry our souls through to our hearts and bones. Set our hopes and minds on the spirit of life and peace that we may seek, believe, and follow Jesus Christ, who is the resurrection and the life. Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, your hope is our word. O God, giver of life, place your hand on the hearts of those who lead this planet, this nation, and this community. Fill them with virtue, empathy, and honor for the benefit of all your people. Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, your word is our hope. O God, giver of life, bestow your healing touch upon all in ill health, emotional turmoil, or in despair. Grant them and those who give them care rest for today and hope for tomorrow. O God, giver of life, let our tears be dried and our grief released as you call our faithful loved ones to the joy of new and eternal life. Creator, Redeemer, Sanctifier, your word is our hope. O Lord our God, breathe into our mortal bones and awaken us from the death of sin as our waiting souls turn toward the radiance of your mercy, forgiveness, and everlasting life. We ask through Jesus, your Son, the Holy Spirit, our guide, who together with you are one God, 
now and forever. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.